Good morning. It is Tuesday, just after nine o'clock. I have my good friend Dr. Aaron Chapa here in studio. If you're if you're viewing this on social media, if you are hearing my voice, maybe going back and listening on on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. Go ahead and share this out. We're going to be spreading some positivity. We're going to be talking about health, nutrition. We're going to be talking about staying well, getting well, healing your body with food, maybe not living in fear. We're going to be talking about um, some positive things. We're going to be taking a, a positive outlook on everything that's going on in the world. And it is a little bit of a, a crazy time, but you know, this is what Dr. Chapa has been talking about for um, I'm going to say almost a couple years here on KHEA Radio, you know, bu- boosting your immune system, being able to deal with things that come into your body. And uh, Dr. Chop is here, you know, been been uh, preaching it for a while. So if you're taking the time to tune in, go ahead and share this out. We're going to be talking about health, nutrition, what you can do to live your best life, maybe even while you are quarantined at home or things are a little bit different. That's what I have been honestly struggling with is trying to make sure that I have the right kind of food to eat because if you go to the grocery store, the shelves may be a little bit more barren than they aren't normally. Um, what do you do in that instance, in that case? Um, I have some thoughts and some suggestions on that, but we're going to make sure that we uh, get those from Dr. Chapa, from the man himself, from Living Well Clinical Nutrition Center, located in League City, Texas, 815 East Main Street. If you haven't been to his website, you can always go check that out. It's just livewell.com. Um, again, feel free to share this out. Let me know what you got going on today. I'm going to kick us on to the FM and get this reintroduced and um, and learn about everything Dr. Chapa has been up to. Here we go. Good morning. This is KHEA Radio, 99.5 FM. Right now it is 9.06 a.m. on a Tuesday. That means we have Dr. Aaron Chapa here in studio from Just Live Well Clinical Nutrition Center, Living Well Clinical Nutrition Center. You can go to justlivewell.com to learn more about Dr. Aaron Chapa's office in Leak City. You know, right right now is a time that is, it's not unprecedented in our country, but it is definitely in my lifetime. And I'm going to take a guess and say it's unprecedented in Dr. Chapa's uh, lifetime as well. Dr. Chapa, good morning, sir. How are you doing today? I'm good, Guardy. Good morning to you. Dr. Chapa here, Living Well Clinical Nutrition Center. And thank you all for tuning in. We're so glad to be here. I mean, we could very well be um, in some parts of the world on forced lockdown. I mean, uh, uh, one of my patients um, was uh, in for, shot me an email yesterday. They were in uh, Jordan and they were caught the last flight out, if you will. Yeah. Uh, before they shut it all down. I mean, these people are. Uh, I think they can go in their backyards, but I think for the most part they are literally, you know, un uh, the quarantined. You know. And, uh, you know, approximately two weeks and, and, uh, life is definitely different. You know what I mean? It's, uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it, it, I would say perilous times. It's a, a different for me for sure. What does qu- quarantine life look f- like for you and your family? Uh, at this point in time, um, I mean, up until, you know, we got this l- last Galveston County order, um, it's been relatively normal. We've been bouncing around, uh, in the backyard. We've cleaned up stuff around the house. I mean, it's a great time to kind of catch up on all the to dos. <laughs> you know what it I mean? Is, yeah. And and so um, your kids are they're regularly like homeschooled, right? Right. So because we homeschool, life is relatively normal. Uh, <laughs> Can you give us some tips? Yeah, I, I, I could <laughs> probably. Folks I, we could probably. Uh, I should have brought my wife online. She could probably have oh, helped. Man. And and for sure, I mean, there's so much um, that we need to be. You know, all learning. Everybody's on a learning curve. All the 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 the, the teachers um, that I've talked to are on learning curve, and I mean it is uh, fascinating um, to see how steep the learning curve is and how quick people can adapt and and you know get it figured out because that's what it's going to take. You know, we we just got to get it figured out and move forward and figure out where um, does the next phase of our, our our next logical step come from, and and we'll figure it out. I mean, this is what we do, right? I mean, we we create things in the world um and we are resourceful people and when we're up against our precipice we'll figure things out and even um, math for even, for having to homeschool your kids yeah may, maybe yeah remember if when in doubt start at the basics you know addition is uh and and then the next level up is multiplication <laughs> subtraction is the next level up is division you know you, you just gotta you gotta make sure those math facts are intact that's funny yes so yeah your 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 life has been relatively the same i mean you've been living this uh 
you know, try, you know, healthy lifestyle, spreading awareness, letting people know that we need to, you know, up our immune systems. And um, it's yeah, it's it's a crazy time right now. Well, so, you know, there, there's so many things, Guardy, I'd like to to share. And uh, first and foremost, I, I want people to keep their wit about them. Um, I, I, I got a great quote uh, yesterday uh, from a great doctor friend of mine uh, by Rudard Kipling. Um, and in he, it says, if you keep your wits about you while all others are losing theirs and blaming you, the world will be yours and everything in it. What's more, you'll be a man, my son. <laughs> you mm. know, so the reality is, is this is a time where we have to be responsible. We have to keep our wit about us. We have to remain in an attitude of vigilance and, and, and keep a, a mindset of like, you know, look, this is not the end of the world. Um, this is a, a virus. And a virus is a virus is a virus. You've got 100 trillion viruses probably floating around in you at this given point in time. You've got, you know, 10 trillion immunological cells floating around in your system <clears throat> at this given point in time. Only if you had a dollar for every immune cell that you have uh, in your system. But the reality is, is the viral uh, patterns are more abundant than the um, uh, even your immune markers. But your immune markers are so strong, they have the ability to suppress and subdue. As the Bible talks about, like, I really help, try to help people understand that, like, your body is designed to adapt. It's designed to figure stuff out. When you get cold and you're, you get goosebumps popping up on your arms, that is a natural stressor response. Your body says, oh, I got to get warm, so I got to shiver, or I've got to get the goosebumps. Um, if you are hot and you start sweating profusely, that's an indicator that your body's trying to cool down. Have you ever seen a lizard try to cool down? They open their mouth, and they, and they, and they just stay, They just kind of look like they're frozen, but they're, you know. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't noticed it, that, but you have a lizard. I, I have a lizard at home, and so <laughs> I, I'm like, oh, cool. I mean, yeah, that, a, is, that a, is cool. A neat thing to observe on how different species regulate body temperature, but that's a neurological response. Like, you, you know, if you take a, 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 a child that's, you just got a brand new baby, right? Yes. Congratulations, by Thank the way. You. That Thank is you. so exciting. If you take your, the pin in your hand and you rub it from the heel up towards his feet, you're going to see a, a, a fetal response, a healthy response of his nervous system that his uh, certain nerve pathways are intact and but over time that pathway will decline like he won't need it forever um, you have a ton of neurological inputs in and around your belly button why because you well he had a bell uh, an umbilical cord recently attached to that so it, there's a lot of neurological responses and immunological responses sitting around a transition site where blood flow is Pro, you know, crossing over um, into his life. I mean, it's what's building him and what and how he's eliminating waste. So there's soldiers, if you will, immunological soldiers and neurological um, cells present to monitor and to make sure that everything is doing what it's supposed to be doing and to make sure that he grows and develops like he's supposed to. And now that he is out of the womb and disconnected from that umbilical cord, what happens to the umbilical cord? It just withers away. It withers away. Yeah. And so, interesting, he doesn't need the umbilical cord anymore because it's old news. Like, it's no longer his lifeline. And and, and so, that's the, the, the beauty of life. We're always going to be exposed to things in our environment. We're always going to be uh, up against bacterium and viral patterns. And if you look at history, a lot of the... Um, viruses and weird, you know, diseases that have come down the pa the pike, they've all eradicated themselves as we have cleaned up, uh, you know, our sewer systems, and we've gone from open aired sewers to closed aired sewers. I'm reading um, a book right now about like, you know, just the late 1800s, how they would literally open up the grounds, and men would go down in there and they would take out the sewage of the city and they would carry it to the fields to put all over the cropland only to bring all the crops back in to the city 
and we wonder why we had things like scarlet fever or rheumatic fever or why you know later into the 1900s we had the you know uh, spanish flu we had the you know um the different viruses that have transpired even in the last 30 years mm -hmm. and, and so um it, it it's this is a virus and it is a not you know the end of the world it really isn't and i really want people to grasp hold of um this is your body's opportunity to mount a response and so i i thought about a couple different ways that we could kind of talk about you know how the immune system works and why nutrition um is such an essential part of healthcare today because at Living Well Clinical Nutrition Center, we give people alternatives to drugs and surgery. That is my vision. That's my mission. I feel like truly God put that in my heart to, to go and make this impact into people's lives, to share how to live better, be better, and stay better through lifestyle choices, through diet choices, through stress management. And right now, when we look across the globe, there is relative panic. I mean, in... And, and I would hate to say even um, economic concern. I mean, there is a lot of things that we can be stressed about. Like this, if there's ever a time to stress, this is probably a good one whenever we're pretty much told we can't work, we can't do this. I mean, uh, and, 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 it, and this too shall pass, right? We, I, b I truly believe that this too shall pass. But your a body's ability to have a healthy immune response is why I'm here. Like, I want people's bodies to respond to any type of bug, any type of virus. You know, my, my biggest kind of, you know, wonder right now, and no one's either doing the statistical analysis. I looked it up. I can't find good research at the moment that I can, that I, I truly feel comfortable sharing. But right now, it's, we should be at about 120,000 um, deaths uh, with respect to flu. It, you know, from from the 25th of December to the 21st of January, uh, which I think is probably fairly accurate, about 38,000 people have died of the flu. Um, and, you know, to date, we haven't had that many people even come close die of this virus. And uh, but is is but it is an envelope virus, very similar to the flu. I wonder if the flu is still on track to take those numbers. Well, th that's the whole wonder, right? Is yeah, no, we're not. We're so concerned about this. What's the flu really? Is the flu doing anything, or has it, over the course of time, just like all bugs and viruses, begin to eradicate themselves as we get smarter and mm -hmm. we start learning approaches to stimulate the body's healthy adaptive response? And and when you give the body a healthy adaptive response via good lifestyle choices and practices, things that you add in daily. I mean, if you're at home and 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 I, I, I made a um, a video the other day on Facebook, and it talked about, you know, C-R-A-P. Spells crap, right? It's a bad word. I got it. But it means something in this case. <laughs> yes. And, and the, if you are at home living on famine foods, carbohydrates only, refined foods only, additives only, or alcohol, you know, primarily, and, and processed foods, box foods. I think that's fair to say a lot of people are, yes. by the way, by the way, yeah. And that's why I feel like I made the, vi why I made the video mm -hmm. is those are the foods that are slowing down your digestive tract. They're slowing down your system up to 30, 35%. Plus you're at home kind of twiddling your thumbs wondering, uh, what do I do? Snack. And so, yeah, we, we, we reach to comfort. We reach to the junk foods and, and we, we start, re we start eating those things, not realizing it's slowing us down and that's compromising your immune response. That is trouble number one, T-R-O-U-B-L-E, trouble. We can't have that. So we have to start thinking, all right, well, what can we do? You know, um, we can do, uh, there's some things going around about how to boost your nitric oxide just by doing, you know, simple body squats. If you've got a kettlebell in your house, swing a kettlebell. If you can drop down on your knees and do uh, knee push-ups or foot push-ups or can't do those, just do a plank can't do that do a modified plank on your bed i mean like we can get active we can walk laps around our house we can walk up and down our stairs we can get creative to stimulate some of these leg muscle exercises that stimulate nitric oxide throughout the body that mobilize our lymph system we can drink water only or herbal teas detox teas to make sure that the system is mobilizing the tissues throughout the body better 
when our stresses are up. We can manage the stress response by making sure that we have tools, things like I've always talked about, Adaptogen, Mentran, Neviton, some of the best things in the world to, cre to control a neurological response of stress. When the stressor of stress comes on us, our heartbeat, what, rises, right? It gets mm -hmm. faster. It starts pumping. Um, if, it is get, if we can control it and m knock that stressor down, then we are in a situation where we're also controlling inflammation. Because as your body temperature rises, as your heart rate rises, as your it, your body is is uh, potentially becoming more and more inflamed, uh, but it, in a good healthy way, like we're describing here so far, these are all na good healthy practices that we can. Walking is a good stress free exercise. Body squats is a good stress free exercise. Drinking more water, herbal teas, stress free living. Um, using things like Mentran to calm your nerves and to calm the mind and to slow down your thought process so that you don't drive off the, the, the cliff of despair and get all negative and, and the gloomy world that is upon us. No, no, no. Remember, the, you know, what does the Bible say when, uh, when perilous times comes? We gird ourselves up with the belt of truth. We walk in peace, the boots of peace. We, get to sh we shod our feet with the boots of peace. That way, everywhere we go, we have peace. Even if it doesn't look right, even if you don't have the money to pay your bills, even if you don't have the right food or the right supplements in your toolbox and, 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 we're, and you feel unprepared, uh, you still can rest in something even better than that, uh, the Spirit, you know, resting in the, the Holy Spirit. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, we can pray for the Holy Spirit. We can help you get there. You can call the radio, and, and Guardian and his team up here will help, you know, you work through those things. We can, we can protect our mind with the helmet of salvation. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we st I mean, psychological, you know, games that we play with ourselves can really set us afloat in a really positive direction, or it can drag us down into a negative spiral. And your ability then to adapt and to mount an immunological attack against any virus or bacteria that you are exposed to, or allergy. I mean, by the way. If you noticed, like the the trees didn't get the notice that we're shutting down the world, they should have. They they should have. We sent it out, but yeah, yeah. yeah apparently they ain't listening. They don't care. And and <laughs> and so they're still blooming. The grass is still budding and 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 growing faster than ever. The flowers are doing what they're they're doing. We're all pruning our, uh, our hedges for new growth. And guess what? People are having allergy attacks. People are dealing with sinus crud, and and they can't tell the difference. Is it the corona or is it an allergy? You know. And so you, we have to appreciate that life is still happening just as it always has. The sun will come up. Trying, in my opinion, to run from the coronavirus is like trying to get the sun to not come up this morning. Mm -hmm. So what if somebody is not prepared? What if somebody doesn't have you know, their toolbox, their tool chest? They don't have any supplements in there. They didn't have the right kinds of food. Like they are eating the, the carbs and, and everything else just because, hey, that's – it's the only thing I can manage to get. Is it too late for them? What can they start doing today to help? So, Gardy, you know where this is going. When's the best plan time to plant an oak tree? Thirty years ago. But what's the next even best thirty time? days ago at oh, this point? That's right. If we didn't know like ago. thirty days ago life was gonna be like like it is today, then thirty you know, whenever people we had the same made... conversation thirty days ago, we'd been like today. That's right. And maybe and, some people did start in thirty days ago today. And so when's the next best time to plant an oak tree? Today. Today. So do, are they are they at a space where they are hopeless? Absolutely not. But I do have a quick story because it's kind of comical relief, I hope, is that I was at the Costco in our area, and um, a guy's walking out, and I, I wish I would have been faster on the camera and I would have splashed him. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but he, he's, he's, he's going out, and he's got water. Can I guess what's in his cart? Yes, please. Okay. You got the Costco toilet paper. Yes, oh, of baby. course. I'm going to snack on this. <laughs> <laughs> All quarantine long, right? So you got some toilet paper. He probably has some water. I'm going to guess there's some kind of well, pastas for sure. And There's uh, only one other thing. He had three items. It has to be a cookie or cake or a snack or something like some kind of dessert, right? It was a box of waffles. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought. I'm counting it. I just like, that's <laughs> awesome. You know what I mean? Like he's he's got this figured out. Water, toilet paper, and waffles. And uh, Destiny's Child, I'm a survivor playing in your head to go. Right. That's right. Getting just all the way to the car. So, um, you know, what can a person do to get started today? Uh, number one, make 32 ounces of water per 50 pounds of body, uh, body uh, 32 ounces of water per 50 pounds of body weight. So if you're 130 pounds, round it up to 150 and get your three liters in that day. 
Does that make sense? Like, don't round down, round up. Um, it's better to have a little bit more water because I assure you, it's rare that a person ever walks in and not, doesn't have some kind, some level of dehydration going on. And water should be at the bottom of the food pyramid. Like, it should be the most. But I mean, do you realize? Yeah, your cell structure is primarily, oh, your body structure is, is primarily water. And, and so we can start with water. Then we can start with, you know, uh, eggs and protein, you know, for breakfast. You don't have eggs and protein, maybe you've got some chicken, maybe you've got some, you know, s- sausage links, some ba- bacon or something, you know, like protein. Like It's been hard to find it at the stores, to be fair. Yeah, it, it is. It have, is. Have you? And so I have, we, we, we stock up a lot of this stuff all the time. Like, so like when we went, we didn't have to like buy out the store. We just, added to our supply house what what i've seen is like the local meat markets and even some vendors like anthony macaluso uh with um you know the gun vault which his business has been nuts by the way i've been asking him and people are are stocking up on on he's been getting ammo and firearms like dude that's great great for you a lot you know not everybody's in that yeah he has multiple businesses too and you know that's that's good but um um yeah he has a guy that's like delivering food from from like these places like steaks and meat and eggs and I was like that's cool but like meat markets and different places like your local uh Kins Hens in in Santa Fe like call like some you know you'd be surprised the they have local, them. the local places still have things because the big box stores um are running out of these exactly and yes. nobody and nobody forgets because in mass panic we our, our frontal lobe our frontal lobe turns off and we just start reacting we become what we call reactive if we can get people to stop being reactive and get people to be responsive. Their body, they will make better choices and they'll make better decisions. And a part of like where to start in planting your oak tree today is getting your head on right. That's why I opened up with keep your wit about you. You know, don't drive off the cliff. Don't get too far off in all the the, the conspiracy theory. Don't get too far off in all the crazy politics. Don't get off in um, in, in like the doom and the gloom and how how's that all going to work out. Look. The one thing is for sure, this isn't a situation where, you know, the east side of town's got whacked by a storm and the west side's okay and life's relatively balanced and still working. This is like global, you know, everybody's feeling the effect yeah. of, of of these decisions. I mean, we kind of got an idea, like, like who is actually running the country at the moment. Like, it's the CDC, you know, like, they, they shut us down. And, um, and so... You know, this is where we be smart. This is where we like, look, okay, look, if you know you've potentially been exposed, don't go out and, and cough on other people. If you know that um, uh, you're not feeling well, maybe, you know, sit back and rest up. Assess your bowels. Assess, are you, are you having a bowel movement? I mean, I know, like, people don't like talking about their bowels, but my job is to help you understand why your body gets sick. And one of the number one reasons is one of two bathrooms in your ba- body get backed up. You have two bathrooms, your natural one, the one that you're very familiar with that you use the TP for, um, that's one of your bathrooms. And then the second bathroom is uh, your cells have an excretion pathway into the lymph system. And, and, and both of these systems, if they get backed up or if one gets backed up, you're compromised. And that compromised state will cause your body to have an issue. So make sure that the system's flowing. I mean, you can't see your inside system, but you can get an ideal. If you, if you feel around your lymph, and you feel a little like sore, you feel a little bit of a nodule or something, that could be an indication of a limp swelling. I had a patient come in just yesterday. She had, you know, limp swelling under her uh, left armpit. At a, um, and, and guess what? Does that mean it's like the flu? Does that mean it's corona? Or does that mean she's got some clogged up lymph nodes? Clogged up lymph nodes. Her, one of her bathrooms is clogged up. So we opened up the, the, bath, the bathroom. How did we do that? We use a, um, a, mas- a percussor in our office, a mas- massager device, I'll call it. But it, it's like a jackhammer, and it breaks up those tissues subcutaneously, and we can help mobilize those tissues. We can use essential oils to rub on the lymph system, like lemon is a great one uh, it, you know, for the lymph system. Uh, we, can use, um, uh, uh, we can use herbs to, uh, to mobilize stuff through the system and, and get this, the, the body to open up that way. We can just drink simply more water, and that will do a lot of good minerals are huge right now like like this because of the amount of stress we're under mentally physically and emotionally um we are we are using up minerals by the truckload we need to load up on minerals calcium magnesium iodine um and and uh, these multi minerals that we have at, at living well 
And and these are just tools, guys, not to fight off corona, but just in general to make sure that your body is plugged in to the source of its, you know, uh, of its survivability, its adaptability, and its immune response. And so it, it's it's really a, a a it's a process of allowing the body to feed well so that it can live well. If we stress well, we can live well. If we think well, we can live well. And so wherever you're at, you know, let's uh, there is probably somebody uh, in your orbit that if you've got nothing would probably lend a helping hand. And and like it, it, it this is where we'll also find out who our neighbors are. We'll find out, you know, who is going to um you know, physically go to bat you know, to help out. You know, there's uh, th- things we can do, and um, there's some things that are out of people's control, but there's also things that, you know, people can do. And uh, anytime there's always been a storm or a, trage- a tragedy, um, it's amazing the amount of people that come together uh, that are willing to get their hands dirty, that are willing to get in the trenches. And I'll be honest with you, that's why I, you know, am thankful that I, I can still be working on people. I mean, I remember a time when I had um, neck pain so bad that driving down the road with the gas pedal and or braking hurt so bad that, like, I I would moan. Like, I I couldn't wait to get worked on fast enough. And had I not gotten worked on fast enough, I would have, you know, I would have been hurting. And uh, and it wouldn't have gotten better. I've got four adjustments in four days. And in two of the days, I got two adjustments uh, a day. And that's what got me back ready for the next working day, um, even though I worked every day. You know, like, yeah. I, I mean, I, but it it would have probably taken weeks to get better. I had a patient come in um, or email me yesterday that has, you know, um, issues with digestion, major, major issues with digestion because of the stress of what's going on in the world. And this is the worst flare-up that she's had in, um, y- you know, years. And, and she hasn't really got fully established here in Houston. She's new to the area. And and so she's in a situation where she's not, this isn't the time that she wants to go establish care, you know? So <clears throat> she's established care with us, and we gave her some ideas on how to get her flare under control digestively because stress is a number one driver. I hate blaming stuff on stress, guys. I really do. But adaptogen, mentor, and neviton is one of those things. You feed the adrenals with the adaptogen. You calm the brain with the minerals from the mentrian, and you enhance the the tolerant stress load of your nervous system's ability to take on more with the neviton. There's nothing magical about these things; they're just herbs and minerals. They're and and they're but they what they do is they give the body tools and resources to manage a situation better. So for all you now uh, newly homeschooled parents, first and foremost. Manage your stress. Congratulations. Congratulations. First I mean, day of school pictures right. are due today, actually. That's right. We would love to see them here on KHE Radio. <laughs> uh, and, and, the, and, you know, I don't know what we, we should do, something really cool for the best one. Um, yeah. Because uh, it, it is, this can be, a, we can find the silver lining in all this. And we can also realize that, man, maybe, maybe there's some, there is a blessing uh, in slowing down and realizing that we work too much. Like, maybe we need to go back to siestas. I mean, in, at, at, they've done research on a 26-minute nap for NASA space flight flyers. Um, they increase productivity in their cognitive function by over 35% throughout the whole day, where without a 26-minute nap, they, they are not as sharp. Now, they're sharp because they're flying airplanes, but, I mean, they were able to measure another level of sharpness. Let's say that you knew you had to work overnight and you weren't going to get to sleep tonight because there's some people that work shift work, right? There's some people that, that don't get good sleep if they, yeah. um, uh, because they have these night shifts. But let's say it's a, even just a normal person. Like, you're not going to sleep tonight for whatever reason. If you got a 30-minute extra nap sometime today, you're going to be uh, 37% more effective getting through the night. Now, it's not a big percentage, because we need to sleep, but they found that you're way more likely to get through it with less immunological repercussions. Because when you lack sleep, so getting good sleep, by the way, is another lifestyle thing we can do um, to make sure that your your immune system is strong, 
it's adaptable, it's ready to handle whatever you're up against. Um, you're able to uh, to get a good night of sleep is important. But man, take a take a nap. You know, siestas. Uh, we always joke about you know if we could get all go back to having a siesta in the afternoon. Wouldn't it be nice if we had a siesta in the afternoon? Well, we could start maybe practicing that. I mean, everybody's working from home. I've heard more people going for walks. I've heard more people that are just clearing their head they're, with the reassessing and revamping where they're at in the in, in the world. This is reflection time, you know, and you can start prioritizing. You know what? My wife is my priority. My children are my priority. You know, I, and yes, God. I, I, I'm thankful for my work, but man, maybe I need to look to the heavens and I need to, or, or you know, focus in on mentally getting right with the Lord my, from a heart perspective getting right with the Lord and saying, Lord, we need we need your presence over this land. We need to repent. First John 1 John 1.9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Cool. You know, um, I'm in. You know, who's in? I bet you every one of us, Christian or no Christian, you could probably repent for something. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and, um, and, and I'm telling you, we need to get our minds, our, our spirit right so that we can get our lives right again. I think we have been so off uh, over the years, and we've gotten caught in the rat race of burning the candle at so many different angles. And, you know, uh, we, we worship only on Sundays but wonder why we don't really see God moving in our lives. Mm-hmm. Well, Doc, it, Dr. Chapa, you know, I was like this close to having what I felt was like my life was together. You know, everything was falling into place. 2020 looked like it was going to be a good year. Um, and it still can be and still will be. Absolutely. We're going to make the best of it. Absolutely. But, you know, I was like this close. And and then I've seen a lot of memes. And I feel like a lot of people are coping <laughs> with memes because some of them are honestly funny. It's like, hey, it's taking the situation. And it it adds a lot of humor to it. And people are dealing with that. And there's, you know, there's different ways we can find releases. But there was memes about that. I was like, man, my summer body's canceled. Things are done. You know, I've been stuck in the house and, and now I'm like a teacher and there's all kinds of stuff going on. But that was one thing I was just uh, thinking of, of like different ways that we can manage, manage, you know, you were sharing all those, those herbs and supplements and stuff you can take trying to find time to have a socially distant walk, you know, with your loved ones or what or whatever, you yeah. know what I mean? But, um, and then you were also talking about uh, people who work overnight. And one thing I've, I've noticed, like these people that are at the hospital, cause my son, my son, uh, he's doing he's doing good, but my son's in the NICU. Um, he was born um, about like 12 days ago. All these days, like they flow together, right? But there's all these nurses and doctors and nurse practitioners and security and people that work at the hospital 24 hours a day, and they're there like all night, you know, working these 12-hour shifts and even longer. Um, but I just wanted to say, hey, thank you to them because I know a lot of people who are who are nurses and they're out there hustling, and I don't know what they're doing to get their their schedule switched, but they're like there and alert and everything else. And that's and, and we do need to be thankful I mean, because there are people, listen, there will be people that will be affected by the virus. There will be people that will be permanently affected by the virus. There's also people that aren't affected physically, specifically by the virus, but emotionally by the virus. I was informed yesterday, one of my patients their grandmother is expected to die in the next two weeks. And guess where the grandma's at? In a nursing home. Guess where no one can go? The nursing home. She doesn't understand. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, why isn't nobody coming to see me? Why did I stop coming to see me? And, um, and, and so there are some really sad stories. You know what I mean? And, uh, and, what about, you know, and we've got to be thankful for the people that are there. Uh, we've got to be thankful for the people that are in the trenches that are exposing themselves to these things. I saw um, a group of nurses and medical professionals praying in the name of Jesus at their hospital the other day. It was really a special thing to see. Uh, you don't see a lot of that um, these days. But I'm telling you, man, if, I, it, we need revival. We need uh, to wake up spiritually and realize that, you know, uh, we don't own this land. God owns this land. You know what I mean? And, um, and you know, we're, we've kind of the Bible talks about, you know, we get turned over to we we know God's judge in the land when we get turned over to the sins that are spoken of in in the scripture. Nobody wants to talk about that, you know. And I get it, it's hard. Um but the reality is is 
God is just, and his ways are always above our ways, and, and we don't understand, but his, it, he, his, his way of doing things, uh, but it's always for his glory, and, and there will be a silver lining through all this. I really believe it. Yeah, what's tough about it is the entire world. It's the entire world. You know, usually hurricane season, people make sure they're gassed up. Hey, I got to leave before this stuff hits, but there's nowhere that you can go, and that's why they're asking people, hey, you know, if you can— Stay, you know, stay, hang stay tight, pulled. and you know, there's a lot yeah, of. And there's no way you can go. You can't go to hotels. I mean, you can't no, do nothing. Can't. I mean, it's no really, it's it's really a weird. So this is kind of something that popped up. You know, this is going to sound ugly, but I want it to. Oh, oh, let's push it forward to the positive. You know, it's a. Re- we're always reminded stuff like this is a reminder that we're always about three days away from chaos. That's <laughs> fair. Yeah, yep. it's definitely a week uh, a week of uh, away from total disaster. And two weeks away from utter anarchy. I mean, like, this is not a time to get crazy. This is a time to realize and recognize that uh, we can <clears throat> spend quality time with our family. We can sp- we can communicate. I mean, it's kind of weird through the fishbowl, like looking through to all the people out in the world through the, uh, the, the lens of a camera. <clears throat> but what if, isn't it cool, though, that, like, we're not, we still have a means of reaching out. I mean, think of in the Spanish flu days or in the 1800s where they weren't sure what was causing these plagues and whatnot, and they didn't have a means of communication. You didn't know if your neighbor had it. You couldn't text them, you know what I mean? Wash your hands. You and, can and, tell people, that's right. just wash your hands and don't touch your face. But I will say with this envelope virus, this um, coronavirus, I mean, it, it because it's an envelope, it is relatively easy to desanitize. Like, um, wash your hands, you know, um, if you are feeling ill, don't go around people. Like, make sure you're resting. Get your water. It's just these are simple, simple, simple stuff. But it, the old kiss principle works. You know, keep it simple. And so we want to keep it simple going through the process. And uh, I thought, you know, this would be kind of fun to uh, to share. And you know, going into this season, right? And 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 to to find out what is it, like how like are we? What are we worth? What are we worth? Okay. So here's. Here's here's how uh, here's your worth, and I think you'll really appreciate this. And um, here goes. So, uh, okay, so let me help you recognize your true worth as a marvelous creation of God. Several years ago, Dr. Harold J. Moritz, uh, a leading biochemist, received a birthday card from his daughter that said, "Biochemists have determined." that the human body is worth only $2.98 in raw materials. Happy birthday anyway. (laughs) Intrigued by that figure and realizing that the human body is not just raw materials, but complex chemical structures, Dr. Moritz uh, took out his uh, chemical supply catalogs and began looking up the prices of all chemicals that compose the human body. Guys, y'all going to love this. Get ready. Here are some of his findings. Hemoglobin, $285 a gram. Insulin, $47.50 a gram. Trypsin, $36 a gram. Bilirubin, the bile pigment, $12 a gram. The human DNA, $76 a gram. Collagen, $15 a gram. Human uh, albumin, $3 a gram. Uh, Acetate kinase, $8,860 a gram. Alkaline phosphatase, $225 dollars a gram amino acids such as bradykinin co- uh, cost upwards of twelve dollars a gram that's just one co- uh, uh, follicle stimulating hormone eight million dollars a gram prolactin the, hu- the the hormone this that stimulates milk production of mothers that costs seventeen dollars and fifty cents uh seven i'm sorry seventeen point five million dollars a gram okay get ready it gets better taking all these into account and calculating the percentages of each chemical in the human body, Moritz arrived at the cost of two hundred and forty-five dollars and fifty-four cents per gram weight of any human body. So, I weigh approximately one hundred and sixty-five pounds. So, that's seven hundred seventy-four thousand eight hundred forty-three grams. So, since seventy percent of the human body is water, I subtracted that in <laughs> order to get my dry weight of two, twenty-two thousand four hundred fifty-three grams times two hundred forty-five. Point five four, um, and I came to five point five million dollars. 
So you're looking, Guardy. You're hearing, if you're all those that are out there, you're hearing a $6 million man, approximately. I think that's a little undervalue. I mean, the, when you take into account all the knowledge that you've shared and, and the well, other I, stuff. Yeah. I, I like how you think, Guardy. Right, so yeah. it gets better. Thank you. Just like segued right into the next piece here. But if these chemicals had to be assembled into cellular structure, the cost would be $600 billion. And if these cellular structures were turned into the human cells, Dr. Moritz reported a figure of six hundred trillion. I'm sorry, six thousand trillion dollars. Still not over. If that's not overwhelming enough, when these cells are formed into tissues and tissues into organs and glands and muscles and nerves and bones and joints to make a fully functioning human body, Dr. Moritz states that our ability to calculate the worth of man becomes impossible. And that just gives me goosebumps. Every human being is priceless. Don't sell out too cheap. Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And especially, so don't sell yourself cheap, especially when you, when, when you remember that someone already paid the price for you. And that person is Jesus Christ. Isn't that cool? That is really cool. I wonder where the little girl got the two dollars and ninety eight cent figure from. <laughs> from I a, need to from see a, her numbers from a from a, a Hallmark card, I suppose. <laughs> oh, it was just straight up in the card already. <laughs> and yeah. so, um, and, and so, and, uh, thank you, uh, uh, Doctor Fannin, for sharing that with me. That was a uh, absolute, you know, eye opening statistic and figure. And I hope it's encouraging to many of you guys out there. Don't sell yourself cheap. Your body's worth more than we can put a figure to, and, and uh, it is a powerful thing. Here's a couple of questions. One, one is pretty easy, and then there's another one I have to find, but this one's from, from April. So I know that there is, uh, this is from April. She said, hey, will your office still be open during the stay-at-home uh, order decree? Like, what's going on? Yeah, so uh, right as of now, because of the, there is no, it, we're, if people are suffering and in pain, we still have uh, things that we need to offer them. I mean, like, for the for example, um there isn't we have we have patients that are under you know care that need the work that we're doing that's got them stable and uh, so we're still available we do phone consults for people that are concerned um that's an easy thing we still have we have you know a, a drop box in the back to pick up stuff we'll uh, have somebody available to you know run a package out to your car we have people waiting in their cars you know as their waiting room and we and they call us to let us know they're there and then they come in and uh, so at this point, you know, and uh, we are still an essential piece of the pie. And so we're working in the trenches as well to be present and to be there for our people. And so thankfully we're there. Okay, here's another question. This is from Liz Peters over at Code Ninjas. She said, Dr. Chapa, I have a rare autoimmune and bone disorder and the body is currently in a weird flare. What's the number one thing to help with this? Is it food, supplements, and she wants it to be to help. Turmeric, be for, turmeric Forte is a product that we use at the office whenever we're in an autoimmune flare. The turmeric uh, forte is mixed with fingree, and it's very it's forty seven times more potent and anti inflammatory um, than like turmeric by itself, and uh, so it would help pull down you know a flare of inflammation when we're in a state of crisis and then but we obviously there's more to the story when you have uh, bone disorders when you have joint disorders uh, we look at there's a lot of inflammation that comes from food so we want to look at all right we you know products is number one thing that's got to go and i know right now with respect to carbs most people get their carbs from grains and grains being wheat um, that is one of probably a staple in your diet at the moment and it needs to not be um, it needs to be a crutch when true famine hits, and in the meantime, we try to keep you on more of a real food diet, and a real, uh, and that being fruits, vegetables, um, you know, light, easy to digest proteins, fish, chicken, turkey, eggs, and and we and we start observing to see if we can get you know change to happen. Some of the issue that's probably flared up. I got a lot of my autoimmune cases, not just um, this situation, but many that are flaring up right now because of. I hate to say it, stress. And again, if you're not managing that stress, we use a product called uh, Adaptocrine, which has got uh, rod uh, rhodiola in it. It's got ashwagandha in it. It's got ginseng in it. It's got the uh, some raw materials to help just feed the uh, the adrenal glands. It's one of my favorite products for helping downregulate stress. And then the Mentran, again, calming 
the mental break so that your body's not overheating. It's a coolant. It's a mind uh, calming uh, mineral. I mean, minerals are simply God's tranquilizers. I mean, again, um, we're not trying to. We don't. We don't treat the body conditions. We don't treat the body's symptoms. We give alternatives to drugs and surgery by taking care of the person. And so as long as you're, we're getting you to st- stop putting the inflammatory foods in and start putting anti-inflammatory herbs on top of it, we can reverse the flare and get your system back under control. Here's a question. This is from Randy. So as far as what we should be eating fruit and vegetable-wise, is there anything that you suggest? Like what? what is the first ones we should reach for and maybe stay? what are the ones to stay away from? Yeah, so I like anything that pushes liver and kidneys. So like asparagus is really fantastic for your kidneys. Um, the beets are fantastic for your liver. Artichoke is good for your liver. Uh, and there's some overlap, of course, in these uh, departments. And um, we use products called SP Green Food, Cruciferous Complete, that are veggies that will help mobilize liver. We have liver, liveplex and um, AF Beta Food that help drive liver function. And, and again, a lot of the programs that we build, when you start really looking at the nuts and bolts of how they work in the body— They mobilize stagnation. When there's stagnation, there's always going to be symptoms. When symptoms are left unchecked, there's going to be disease. So we want to mobilize the tissues, mobilize the lymphatics. So we want to make sure that the bowels are moving, the liver's draining, the lymph are draining, and we use different herbs and and, and programs to do that. And then we look to food. So I, you know, uh, this morning I had beets, cucumbers, and a few tomatoes. Like I think it was like three uh, of the... um, can't remember those little they're not cherry tomatoes but slightly bigger than a cherry tomato but not a big tomato yeah and uh and some uh, of our pink salt at the office which is a hawaiian um a salt and a mediterranean salt mixed together so there's 82 trace elements and trace minerals in there there's electrolytes in there uh yesterday i did a little salt cleanse uh so i now if you have high blood pressure this is not recommended but um but like i was like oh you know i'm gonna uh, i'm gonna push my system a little bit. So I took a, uh, a quarter teaspoon of the Himalayan salt, or not the Himalayan, but the pink salt that we have in our office, and I threw it in water, stirred it up, and shot it down. And uh, and that brings a lot of water to the bowel to just flush things through. Because a lot of times when stresses go up, our body mobilizes blood to the fight-flight system, running or fighting, right? And, and so we don't get enough blood flow to the rest and digest system or your digestive tract. So we want to make sure that when we, um, when we, what a lot of the programs I'm doing is I'm pulling people's body back into what we call a parasympathetic state where the body can rest and digest and heal and recover as opposed to steer off the, the, the beaten path and get inflamed or be in that, that constant state of fight or flight where, I mean, you're like, you know, uh, a volcano eruption waiting to explode. We can't have that. That's not good for you in this season. It's not good for your family. It's not good for you homeschooling parents. You know, I newly mean, newly homeschooled, uh, newly parents. homeschooling parents mm-hmm. thrown to the wolves. Uh, and and I mean, the favorite thing that a patient told me was, "I never thought this would happen, but my son, who is nine years old, and myself have a conference call in two separate rooms at the same time, in the same house, <laughs> and just never <laughs> really, yeah." And she's like. This is weird. Like with the actual <laughs> teacher? Yeah. No, the, the kids with their class. Okay. A conference call. She's with her work. Conference oh. call. They're both having conference calls, <laughs> getting work done. Yeah. And it's like, this is a weird, this is one of those things you never thought would happen. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm I'm in a part of some uh because I used to work for AT and T like as a technician, so I'm a, in a part of these like technician groups because there's funny memes and it's just it's just good. Some of the guys I worked with are in there and they were talking about like these people are going to be very upset because the internet prices that. You know that they're getting or streams to their house isn't enough to handle, you know, Mom, two conference dad, calls, yeah. working from home, streaming Netflix. Um, you know, maybe it could before when there was some of it, but now everybody's there, so uh, it may cause a more stressful situation. That's why you need that adapter, granted everything else. That's right, and yeah. and and again, going back to you've got to assess the stress, you've got to uh, assess your bowels. Um, you know, I told one of my uh, one of my friends told me early on. This was almost fifteen years ago. Um, before I actually launched, you know, into practice. Um, and he says, I'm not trying to, you know, gross you out or offend you talking about your bowels, but you can learn so much 
by the health and the consistency of your bowels. You know, if your bowels are dry and hard little pellets, um, that means that things are going through too slow and that things are rotting and putrefying. And the average American has 10 to 15 meals caked up inside of them. And, and if it's mushy cow patties or if it's runny diarrhea, it's going through too fast and you can't absorb the nutrients fast enough. And remember, we eat, we digest, we assimilate, we build, right? And then we excrete what we ne- don't need and we use and leverage what we need. And, and so that happens in two systems of our body, in the big system and in the cellular system. And, and so recognizing that you should be having fawn-colored fluffy floaters about a foot long two to three times a day, that's normal. But what's most efficient for toilet paper? <laughs> <laughs> I have a funny meme about okay. that, but I don't know if it's good on the air. <laughs> Maybe not. <I> don't know. <laughs> these are things we need to think about That's in these right. times. It's like, okay, well, if I eat this way, it'll go too quick. I'm going to save, you know, I, I, I have to I, save toilet paper. And so maybe that's why when we're in true famine, you reach to the staff of life. Think about it. When do you use a staff? You use a staff when you're on unlevel ground. You will use a staff when you're on rocky ground. When you're unstable yourself, a cane or a walker, you know, you're unstable yourself. That's when you use grains, bread, rice, cereal, pasta, potatoes. You reach to these filler foods that have a tendency to fill you up because they slow down bowel function so much. They can slow you down up to 37%. So then you can have 10 to 15 meals caked up inside of you. You might want things to go slower because you don't know where the next bathroom break will come. You don't know where uh, some of these uh, places will be uh, that we, we can work you know, our next meal might come from. And so people will reach to grains. But I'm just saying, like, because shipping has not shut down uh, and we can still get access to foods through either local or uh, box vendors, we still have resources available. And this is really, it's a weird famine. It's really more of a stress famine. It's a fear famine. It's a, um, or not fear famine, it's just an act of fear you know, uh, the fear is false evidence appearing real. Fear is, you know, the work of the enemy. Like, that's, if he can get in your mind, that's why you got to put that helmet of salvation on, you know, and um, and make sure that you protect the mind and make sure that you guard your thoughts and, and be careful what you're watching, man. There's a lot of stuff out there that seems to make sense and very well is probably true. And But the reality is, is what can we really do about it other than, Uh, everybody work through it. So if we all go doom and gloom and negative, man, it's just going to be, it's going to be a real bumpy ride. If we can find the silver lining and work through the process and find what you can do, you know, maybe it's a phone call, like maybe it's a a zoom meeting. Maybe it's some sort of way that you can create an outreach to, to, to share positivity, to share uh, Jesus with somebody to be a voice of reason, to talk a friend off the shelf. Uh, I mean, I've got people in my life that have helped me this week. I mean, because I'm not always like, you know, I have to work through my thoughts as well, just like anybody else. Uh, But I just know beyond a shadow of a doubt, the things that I offer to help support the bodies as a whole, because what part of the watch tells time, Guardy? All of it. Need every piece. That's every piece. And what, so we don't treat diseases in our office. We don't cure things. We don't, we, we work with humans. We deal with the body as a whole, and we start to see people living better, being better, and staying better because their body is more ready, readily able to adapt to its surroundings. It's ready, readily able to adapt to stressors. It's readily able to deal with infections and things that are coming at us from every which way to Sunday right now. All right. So right now it's 9.58. There's one more question. Yeah. This comes from Amanda. She said, I was wondering if Dr. Chapa helps uh, with adult and children with ADHD. Yep. So um, obviously uh, Jennifer and I, uh, Jennifer was, she's working on her master's program, nutrition program. At the, uh, she's one of the nutritionists that, at our office. And uh, one of the assignments that she had to uh, work on this week was assess this food log and see if you can give determining factors to why this child has asthma and why you know this kid might have some learning disabilities. And we looked at the food log, and, and the food log is just laden with sugar and dairy and pasta. That's literally the only things that were on the list. It was probably, you know, unfortunately, a common thread in many ch- children's diets today. And, um, and so we find a lot of ADD, ADHD, mental issues. Even as an adult, if you find that you're having a hard time processing or keeping your 
you know, your thoughts clear as you're working through the challenges of your work day. You can use um, food as a modulator to, to, to keep your blood sugar from spiking. Uh, that's one of the first things we do with, with kids is we regulate diet. We start looking at their diet. It doesn't mean that we're going to make them eat vegetables because I yeah, know little Johnny won't eat veggies, so we're going to have to find some solutions. There's, but there's work on mom's part. There's work on dad's part. There's work on the family's part to rally around little Johnny so that little Johnny can get healthy and get well, especially if they're having ADD, ADHD, or defiant, you know, outbreaks or outburst syndromes or anger management issues or whatever. Um, and so um, they're, the food matters. So start your day right. I mean, at this point, nobody can um, – say they don't have enough time for breakfast, you know what I mean? You got a little time. You got a little time. Mm -hmm. And so this is the experimental time. Try just starting everybody's day with protein and protein only. No carbs until 2 in the afternoon. You know what I mean? That means you get uh, a little meat and veggies for lunch um, or just vegetables um, or salad. You, you know, we, we get creative. I, I mean, if it was just, if they all they will eat is eggs all day long, I guess that's all they get. You know what I mean? Like, if it, you can get a protein shake, get a protein shake in there. Try to like put just proteins, what we call logs on the fire, and good healthy fats, avocado or coconut oil, or you know, get creative in making um, you know some almond flour, you know, bread mixes or pancakes or something, and and it, try to be heavier on the fats and the protein for breakfast, and li and little to none, if any. Uh, no sugars at breakfast time, and watch how your morning goes. Watch how their morning goes. And within about four or five days, you'll see just like a calm come over them. They'll just kind of like be less, um, less uh, brain foggy, I guess, and more attentive. They'll, what will normally, what we noticed when we had kids going through the process just a month ago on the detox, or two months ago on the detox, we had you know two kids that normally just literally, are up, fidgety, they're running around, they can't sit, they can't uh, focus, and they went through the process within two weeks. They're doing their schoolwork, which normally takes six hours. They're getting it done in three hours. And that's really one of the interesting things about, I think, homeschooling. You can get quite a bit done when you have, like, strong, focused attention uh, on your work. But we've got to retrain. Education is the art of learning, self-directed education, not necessarily you know, memorizing facts and figures. Like, you know, memorize it and dump it isn't the model that we should be teaching. We should be teaching the art of learning, like how to learn, how to fall in love with the act of learning. If we can get our kids reading more, if we can get them more engaged in vocabulary and building a powerful word base, they will read better, more effectively. They will read, they'll have a, a desire to read, you know, more complex literature. Um, or classics. This is where you start asking, you know, on your Facebook groups and your in your social circles, you know, what are some classic ma book material that I can get my you know family reading and read to your kids. One of the best things that you can do, uh, you know, homeschool tip that we've learned at different conferences is read to your kids. Read to the kids. The kids love to be read to. It's okay if one of your kids is drawing. It's one. It's okay if one of your kids is um, playing with little dollies. It's okay if one of the kids is just sitting there, you know, you know, just listening for what we, what my wife has the kids do is to call out if they hear an L-Y word, you know, uh, 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 and 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 it's amazing. I'm like, because what they have to do is they have to listen. To, Those are the tips we need, Doctor Chapa. I know, I know. You had to wait to the end to get it, but yes. that's the way it goes. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what we needed. Um, you know, but so th there, there's so much to learning how to even teach when you're in the homeschooling realm. There's two levels of education that you're regaining. You're regaining uh, a level of education that you didn't get yourself um, because we, uh, you know, this is going to sound probably bad, but like like there is a level of the, we kind of simplify it to meet the masses' needs as opposed to the art of true learning yourself and to retrain your own kids on how to fall in love with learning. So there's two levels of learning that are being recaptured in the homeschooling realm. And I would say use the next three to four months as that. Like, what can you learn in teaching your kids grammar? Oh, 
I didn't know what a participle was. You know, I didn't know what. I don't uh, know what that a, is. A, a subject. Uh, a, a, maybe it's just a subject of a sentence or a verb of a sentence. Or going through the adjectives or looking for those dress-up words like yeah. ly words. And and I mean, um, a great resource if you want. Andrew Poodwall is a great, great grammar guy. Um, all my homeschool friends will give me a, a shout out, like. And uh, but Andrew Poodwall is outstanding writer and grammar and English and language teacher and um, one of my favorites. I met him at a conference and listened to him speak and just um, um, uh, he's got a ton of YouTube videos. He's got a lot of core curriculum that you can access and it is fascinating because he teaches things that I wish I would have had in English grammar classes. I would have been a a better writer and uh, and now I'm trying to with everything else relearn the art of writing and man it's 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 a lot harder at you know 40 than it would have been if my only job was to write a paper uh, a creative paper in school right mm-hmm. you know there's a lot more responsibilities and and pulls on my strings that distract me from staying engaged yeah and to be honest in school i, I can speak from personal experience i remember i just need to pass this test i just need to remember yeah. this just enough so I, I know the answers i don't want to understand why i just need to know the answer. I don't know. That's all I need. Right. So hey, here's a question. This is from Mo. And I know we did some ideas earlier and we were talking about breakfast, but they want to know specific ideas for breakfast. Is fruit OK? Yeah. Uh, I mean, at the, so uh, the other day I was ha- I had some berries for bre- like so raspberries for breakfast and um, and, and eggs. Um, I had one day I just had raspberries and a shake. I mean, uh, you could throw in fruit into a shake and make a you know vegetable fruit smoothie. And and where you get creative with the shakes, for example, you can throw a handful of spinach into your shake, and you won't taste it. It'll taste just like the the uh, the fruit and, and the powder that you're using. So if you got a vanilla or a chocolate, you could throw some spinach in there. Um, assuming you don't throw like the whole box, right? But I mean, if you throw uh, a good handful of spinach in there, it'll it'll and you got a good blender. It'll blend it right up, and you'll be like, "Cool." I mean, I just ate spinach and didn't even. It wasn't bad. <laughs> yeah, it kind of tastes like chocolate. You could do um, put it half an avocado or a quarter of an avocado. A lot of people hate avocado, surprisingly, but you could put a quarter to a half avocado in your shake, and it'll make your shakes really nice and creamy. Um, you could use. Uh, you can get creative with your eggs. Uh, I found on Pinterest and and made poached eggs uh, in a muffin tin. So you put a tablespoon of water. Um, in the a muffin tin, you open and crack an egg, and I believe the I'm gonna probably mess the temp up, but I think the temp was like at 325 for like eight minutes or something like that, and it you create darn near a perfect poached egg, and uh, I was pretty impressed. Um, I do I do pr- a proponent of um, you know proteins for breakfast, uh, so I use the Applegate Farms chicken sausage. I use bacon. I use um, you know, I try to avoid the MSG stuff at this point, or monosodium glutamate, or the high preservative-based nitrates and nitrite foods. Um, one morning we had turkey uh, pepperonis uh, mixed in the eggs. I know that sounds really weird and crazy, but you get creative when it sounds you, delicious when to you, me. You, yeah, almost, I, I try it. Yeah, it looked and it tasted amazing. Mm. Oh my gosh. Um, if you're a vegetarian, uh, eat a salad the size of your head. You know, a lot of vegetarians are carbitarians, and they reach to carbohydrates. Like I said this morning, I ate a vegetarian breakfast with some uh, uh, watermelon seeds that we sell at our office. Watermelon seeds are 10 grams of protein per ounce. So, I mean, you can get a truckload of protein, plant protein, yeah, if you're a vegetarian. Uh, and you could leverage the uh, chia seed pudding. It's a can of coconut milk i i think it's 7 i'm just guessing you might want to just double check it on youtube or something 7 tablespoons of chia seeds cinnamon um and some vanilla or if you don't like vanilla use something else or don't mm-hmm. uh but you can literally uh put that uh, mix that together put that in your refrigerator 8 hours later you've got some pudding that will rock your socks off you can um uh you can have this is, might be a time where you go well i don't really want breakfast food for breakfast i want you know a meat well go grill go grill something i mean you you can grill veggies right you can saute veggies with olive oil and mediterranean spices and you can put thai spices together to create you know a different dish so vegetables really don't taste to me 
like anything. There's, I mean, beats are pretty strong, right? Um, I would say that uh, for me, eggplant is a pretty like I can tell I'm eating eggplant anytime I get it, no matter how somebody prepares it. But most vegetables uh, are just need to be spiced right. Most people like the veggies that I make for them because I spice well. And but people go, well, how do you spice? I don't know. A little of this and a little of that. Like I just throw stuff together and let chemistry work. And then you find three or four spices and fall in love with it, and then you'll just live on that for a while. My wife makes a um, a vinaigrette dressing with red wine vinegar, balsamic vinegar, uh, garlic, organic garlic powder, and um, I think just salt and pepper. And and it's it, it tastes heavenly. I'm like, how do you do that? And, it, and she goes, she showed me, and I'm like, that's so easy. <laughs> and I'm like, you know what I mean? I'm like, this is it's dumb. magic. What? No, uh, she yeah. made some chimichurri sauce the other day. You can put chimichurri over eggs. You can put chimichurri sauce over a turkey patty. You can make, um, you can put chimichurri sauce on a salad. Uh, you, I mean, you can get, uh, you can use sauces and spices and eat the same base foods that are on what I would call my yellow diet. It's an anti-inflammatory diet. It's a grain-free diet. And um, and I'm not saying you have to be grain-free. You just you pick when you're going to put the grain in, right? Like if you maybe like if we have a grain, for example, um, I'm going to go as long as I can without putting the grain in. I mean, I have had a grain bite of this or that here and there, but I really do strive to avoid it, like because I, I it slows my system down. I don't like it, and it, then it slows my mind down, and it's just not good. Like me and grains don't get along, and I've figured that out about me. And so until I have to eat a grain, a, a morsel, I'm going to enjoy. The fact that I still have the luxury of shipping coming into the store, you know what I mean, and and so this is one of those luxuries where we go, wow, he who controls the food controls the world, you know, like I mean, this is this is crazy, um, but if I, the answer really is creative spices, creative sauces, and the whole thirty cookbook has some great sauces, um, it has some great spices. Um, I mean, we use simply. Uh, organic spices at the store. The Mediterranean spice is a fantastic spice. We use your basic, uh, I use my premier salt, the, which is the Hawaiian and Mediterranean salt from my office. Um, and then we use the, we, we have a slew of other items, garlic powders and um, other kind of cool spices. But be careful. This is one thing that I was really upset about when I was doing my detox this year. A spice that I really love, and I don't know why I didn't, catch this sooner but hey you know we're all on a journey right and i hope that people can learn from my mistakes because they say that um a wise person uh, learns from his own mistakes but a genius and i hope all y'all are geniuses and learn from my mistakes you know learn from others mistakes is a genius and so um i bought a spice from uh simply organics that uh, was the it's all organic and it's an all spice and the second ingredient was sugar and i was like Dang it. No wonder I love this chicken. I mean, it just pours it's sugar delicious. Yeah. all over it. And so you've got to be mindful. I mean, even though it says organic cane sugar doesn't mean it's necessarily good for you. I mean, if I take this, you know, the sugar shaker and go, ah, you know, no wheezing the juice, if everybody knows what that uh, film was. Um, and and you, sugar is not good for you. Um, and really, it, it, it has been so overconsumed. Our bodies really perceive it as an enemy, as a poison. It is a controlled substance. And so of, of trying to put in good, healthy foods during even this weird time that we're all living in, we do the best we can to uh, uh, to live this out. So good, that's an excellent question. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to share, Dr. Chapa? I don't know, man. I could sit here and talk all day. Uh, no, I think we're good. Uh, I hope everybody has a wonderful blessed afternoon a blessed morning i'm thankful to be here uh with you guardy i'm thankful that you know we have the opportunity to just get this message to people because really and truly uh people need to hear uh a different way of living they need to hear uh, that even when it's seemingly crazy out there that we're all kind of going through it together that there are still solutions to living better eating better and taking care of ourselves better so I hope that people learn some great things today. I hope that you really re- recognize your worth, uh, that you know God is still on the throne. Uh, all this is going to work out for his glory, no doubt about it. Um, even when you get down, even if today's a gloomy day for you, you know I hope that you're inspired and encouraged just to say, you know what, 
okay, I got to, it's okay. Recognize that you're going through it. Recognize who's going to get you through it and recognize that we're all 11 days away from our promised land. And what that means in Deuteronomy is the Israelites were 11 days away from their promised land when they were set free from, uh, at a bondage from uh, Egypt. And they groaned, they mumbled, they complained, they bickered, they fought, and it took them 40 years to get to their promised land. And many of them did not go into the promised land because of the grumbling, of the moaning and the groaning. And so my encouragement to all of you, to myself, to my family, to everybody out there that hears my voice is no grumbling, no complaining. And, and anybody says how things are going, I'm 11 days away from my promised land. We're 11 days away from our promised land. And, and just know what that means is you know where your help comes from. We're going to get through this together. And Living Well Clinical Nutrition Center cares about you. We love you guys. And uh, you can visit us at, at our website, justlivewell.com. You can give us a call, 281-554-8600. At this point in time, we are uh, still in the um, category of need, so we're going to serve, and uh, we are here. So um, the anything we can do to be a blessing to your, you and your family, please let us know. We'll do what we can to make uh, the, 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 the challenge less challenging. This is KTA Radio 99.5 FM. This is Kickstart. I'm Gardy. Be blessed. All right, Facebook, don't touch your face. Wash your hands. I shaved yesterday, and I've been, like, a little, you know, itchy. and just It's like, so weird, right? Like, you just want to, like, you, it's, yeah. it's so natural how much we touch ourselves um, that when you're when you're forced to think about it, you go, oh, 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 oh you know? Yeah. And, and how now, you know, people freak out if you, you know, get close to your nose or mouth or something. It's like, you're okay? Got my that. little hand sanitizer. This is the cleanest my hands have ever been, and- <laughs> I've been spending a lot of time, like, you know, up at the hospital and stuff, and they have hand sanitizer and soap everywhere. And then whenever I go home and even coming up to here, you know, I'm just, like, looking for places, and I'm not – I'm using my elbows and all kinds of stuff. I was like, I'm, I'm, I just need, like, little extra hands. Or I'm going to, like, build something <laughs> to put on my elbows and just do that from oh, now on. Oh, funny. <laughs> so, uh, I, you know, it, it's just, it's just a, an interesting time that we live in, and, uh, and you know, but – it is what it is, and so we're going to keep on keeping on and keep trucking. So blessings to all. We'll check you on the flip side. All right, guys. You all have a good day.